those of you those of you who are joining, I just wanted to explain that we're going to wait uh, for just a little less than a minute to give uh, folks an opportunity to join us here. And so we'll get started in just about 30 seconds or so. But uh, welcome uh, to our candidates um, and others who are joining. We'll be getting to the introduction and ground rules in just a moment. We'll share just for folks knowledge that this um, uh, forum today is going to be recorded. Um, it's also on Facebook Live, uh, so there should be a full understanding of that. Um, so we welcome the folks who are able to join us um, in real time uh, at this moment, and uh, I'm sure others will be uh, watching this later. Um, but uh, for posterity, it is uh, 12 noon on June 15th, 2022. And um, uh, again, I welcome you all here. Uh, my name is Paul Burns. I'm the executive director of VPIRG, the Vermont Public Interest Research Group. Um, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this forum uh, today. Joining me as co-moderator is VPIRG's board president, Anna Suberling. Give a wave, Anna. Um, and our honored guests are the three Democratic candidates running uh, for Secretary of State this year. Before I introduce them, I do just want to cover some of the uh, ground rules or housekeeping. Closed captioning is available at the bottom of your Zoom window. The chat and Q&A functions of Zoom are enabled. Uh, if you have comments you want to share for all of today's attendees, you can use the chat function. If you'd like to submit a question for consideration for the candidates, uh, please use the Q&A function. VPIRG has invited all of the candidates participating in the Democratic primary to today's forum. We are not hosting a progressive or Republican uh, forum uh, at this time because there's only one candidate who has filed for both of those primaries. Anna? So today's format is divided into five sections. Uh, first, we'll be getting with two minute introductions. Second, Paul and I will ask questions and the candidates will have 90 seconds to respond. Uh, third, we'll have a segment in which candidates can pose two questions to one another, identifying who they would like to answer the question in one minute responses. Fourth, if we have time, we'll have moderated questions from the audience. And finally, we'll end with one minute closing statements. Um, we'll start in alphabetical order, then rotate who goes first with each question and closing statements will go in reverse alphabetical order. Um, and to keep on track, the candidates will see a countdown timer and the clock will flash red and then disappear when a candidate's time is up. So candidates, please keep an eye on the timer and try to keep allotted times. Otherwise, uh, Paul and I will provide a friendly time check. We are live streaming and recording this forum and it'll be posted for viewing afterward. And if you have any tech issues, please message VPIRG or post in the chat. Finally, with those as our ground rules, it is my privilege to introduce our candidates, Representative Sarah copeland Hansis, Montpelier City Clerk John Odom, and Deputy Secretary of State Chris Winters. Um, Representative copeland Hansis, could you please introduce yourself and your campaign? Thanks, Anna. Hi, I'm Sarah copeland Hansis. It's great fun to be here today on this beautiful uh, sunny day to talk about why I'd like to be Vermont's next Secretary of State. Never before has democracy been under such threat from intentional misinformation to active voter suppression to now elections deniers infiltrating Secretary of State's offices across the country. Our form of government, this democracy is in jeopardy. A little bit about me. I grew up in Corinth in a politically diverse family uh, where we argued politics and uh, discussed current events at the dinner table. I graduated from Oxbow High School. Uh, some of the mentors that I'd like to mention, uh, Bruce McLean, who instilled a love of debate in our raging class discussions. Uh, Fred Rubenfeld, science teacher, who showed me the beauty of our pristine landscape as well as um, uh, empowering us to think of ways to solve environmental crises. 
and Mona Garone, coach, who taught me to see the whole playing field and assess the strengths and weaknesses of the opposition and how to outsmart and more importantly, outwork your opponent. Um, I studied at the University of Vermont and got my teaching certificate through the Upper Valley Educator Institute and taught science in Corinth and Bradford. Uh, and then when I had kids, I was able to stay home with them. In 2004, I ran for the legislature in the backlash against civil unions. And that was a incredibly divided time. Uh, but I stepped into that knowing that I would vote for full marriage equality. And when we achieved that in 2009, um, I was even more proud of the fact that our team didn't lose any seats in the House um, after that historic vote. And thank you to Mona for helping see the whole playing field. Um, in my 18 years in the legislature, I have fought for post-traumatic stress coverage, sexual assault, and sexual harassment prevention. Um, but the most, um, my most valuable um, accomplishments have really been around the climate realm, because if we can't leave uh, a livable planet to our kids, uh, I don't even know why we call ourselves leaders. So happy to be here. Thank you. Um, Clerk Odom, could you please introduce yourself and your campaign? Sure. Uh, my name is John Odom. I've been the elected Montpelier City Clerk for the last 10 years. Uh, before that, I had an extensive history for decades working uh, for causes, uh, largely in um, electoral politics, also in the nonprofit realm. I've worked as a political organizer um, for quite a few uh, organizations, including Bernie Sanders, um, for the Vermont Democratic Party. Uh, I've worked in the nonprofit sector for organizations like VNRC and Planned Parenthood. So this was, uh, I, I, I promised myself that the, um, the clerk's job would be my retirement from politics. So obviously that didn't work out. Uh, I'm running for a few reasons. Um, I, for one thing, uh, the clerk's offices, I believe town clerks, really bring a unique perspective and could bring a unique perspective to the office. We handle a lot of things that the Secretary of State does, such as you know we're working in elections, we're working on archives, but we do it at the neighbor to neighbor, face to face level. And I think that would be a good perspective to bring to the, the other end of the equation. And I would say that I think you'll see every 10 years or so, you get an outsider, you get somebody with a fresh perspective into the office, and they make often quantum leaps in how things are done. 10 years ago, it was Jim Condos. Before that, it was Deb Markowitz. And I'm trying to make the point that I'd be the next one, uh, the next one to, to be in that position. I have a lot of, I guess I would describe myself as running as the more activist, um, candidate, as I believe the networks and the operations of the Secretary of State are unique and create unique opportunities for us to get messages out to the business community and engage the business and the professionally licensed community in things like uh, climate change, in things like the Equal Pay Act. It's an extraordinary resource to that for that. I think the clerks have a lot to learn. Uh, from the, the archives office. And I think election security, which is the specialty that I bring to the campaign, is something that needs to be really overhauled. As, as good a job as, as has been done, it really needs to be overhauled from Thank the bottom you. up. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, time. Thank so, you, Clerk. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Um, and finally, uh, Deputy Secretary Winters, could you Please introduce yourself and your campaign. Oh, you're muted. Can I have my clock start over? No, you're, you're, on, a, you're on a strict schedule. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Paul. I want to thank VPIRG for, for the offer. Um, it's a, it's a down ballot race that uh, may not get as much attention with so much going on. So it's really important, I think, that, that people uh, pay attention to what's going on in the Secretary of State's office, a very small but impactful office in state government. My name's Chris Winters. I'm the Deputy Secretary of State. And when Jim Condos told me he was retiring, I knew I had to step up because I know how much is at stake. Uh, the challenges we're facing today are unlike anything we've ever seen before. Election integrity is under attack. 
Nationally, access to voting is being restricted in ways we couldn't have imagined just a few years ago. But here in Vermont, we've taken a different path. We're expanding the right to vote. We're a national leader in elections and in the many other important services that Vermonters and Vermont businesses rely on from our office every single day. Vermont needs an experienced and effective leader with a track record of results. I'm doing the job already. I'm passionate about this work and I'm committed to leveraging my experience. That's 25 years of public service in the Secretary of State's office, including the last seven as Deputy Secretary to ensure that we uphold that excellence and we build on it. I'm so proud to be the first person in my family to go to college. I'm a father of four great kids and I'm driven to make our state a better place. As a state employee, as a school board chair, or as a little league coach, I just want to solve problems and be of service. I want this job, I'm passionate about this office, and I'm dedicated to this work. Right now, Vermont needs stability and continuity in the Secretary of State's office, and I'm the only candidate who can hit the ground running and will be ready to lead on day one. Thanks so much uh, for your responses and introductions. Really appreciate that. And we're gonna move then right into the questions from Anna and me. Um, and I'll ask Eli to just post a, a photo here uh, as I'm speaking. I wanna begin by recognizing that as we gather today, uh, we're in the midst of congressional hearings related to the insurrection of January 6th, 2021. Just, just over 17 months ago, our sitting president at that time arguably lit the match that triggered an attack on our U.S. Capitol, intending to stop the transfer of power after a free and fair election. You all are seeking to become Vermont's next Secretary of State. Among other responsibilities, our Secretary of State is kind of our champion of democracy. So, before we get into more specific questions today, I just wanted to give each of you an opportunity to share your thoughts at this moment in our history. And you have 90 seconds and we'll begin with City Clerk Odom. Well, I mean, what can I say? Looking at the pictures that we've all seen so many times, they, they evoke so many emotions. It's heartbreaking. Um, it's in, infuriating. Uh, it's, it's embarrassing. Uh, to before the rest of the world. And there is so much to process in that. And I think it makes the point more clearly than anything, just how much we need to stand up and take care of our elections more than ever before. Well, more than ever before, except perhaps, perhaps when we expanded the rights for all citizens to vote. Um, I think there's a lot of pieces at play here. I think there's the worry about, you know, inf misinformation, so much of which comes from foreign actors trying to, to, you know, stir up trouble. There's voter confidence at stake here from all sides of the spectrum. And there's the one that I think is really, really the bailiwick of the Secretary of State's office. And that's actually securing our voter rolls and our election management system. I think we need to look at that from the bottom up. I think that's obviously the piece that Secretary of State needs to really take the lead on. Um, but I know that's getting into probably later questions, but uh, it's, it's a rough, rough picture to look at. Thanks very much. Now, Dep Deputy Secretary Winters, please. So I watched in horror on January 6th, like many of you, um, and then seeing the recent hearings, that sickening feeling that I had in the pit of my stomach then ha has come back and seeing a picture like this does it every time to me as well. Uh, it felt personal for me and, and for our elections team in the Secretary of State's office, uh, because you can draw a straight line between what happened on January 6th and the death threats that we actually received at the Vermont Secretary of State's office can draw it straight back to the outright lies about a stolen election. And as we saw in the hearings in, in recent days, they knew the election wasn't stolen, they knew better, yet they kept promoting that lie from, from the highest offices in the country. Um, and it led to January 6th, it led to death threats in our office, it's led to one in four election officials across the country resigning from their jobs 
It makes me sick. It makes me angry. It want, makes me want to fight back. Uh, I've been on the front line receiving these calls, seeing the effects that they've had. And I can tell you there's really, there's no shortcuts to saving democracy at this point. It's a, there's a trust issue. There's an integrity issue. It's a battle we're gonna have to wage daily. We're gonna have to do it on a lot of different fronts. And this work isn't going to be done after one victory or one defeat or one election or one bill passed. It's going to be rooted in the sustained, informed engagement of citizens and leaders committed to lifting every voice, protecting every vote, and holding our elected leaders accountable. And here in Vermont, we've pushed back, and Vermont needs an experienced and effective Secretary of State ready to lead when the next crisis hits and ready to defend. Thank Thanks you very much. Um, um, and Representative Copeland Hansis, please. Thank you. Um, you know, January 6th, uh, we were in committee in the afternoon when news of the events in uh, in Washington, D.C. started to trickle in. Um, and at that point, we were all still meeting remotely. So we were uh, on Zoom, not unlike uh, the format we're in here today, preparing to begin to move our COVID um, municipal provisions uh, in order to allow safe uh, town meetings in 2021. Um, you know, this is uh, the image that you showed at the beginning is exactly the reason why I'm so uh, passionate about um, being your next Secretary of State, because we're looking at people who uh, who fell prey to misinformation. We are looking at people who actively um, and strategically denied the the results of an election. Um, elections deniers are are the biggest threat that we see coming forward. So how do we how do we meet that threat? Um, I think what we need to do is reinstate that education and outreach coordinator position uh, that existed under Secretary Markowitz. Uh, that's somebody who gets out into our communities, out into our schools, engages with youth, and helps them understand how to participate in democracy, how to disagree without being disagreeable, and how to vet uh, the, the truthfulness of information. I've dealt with climate deniers, um, and it's a, a long strategy that uh, I've deployed over the years, um, and I can deal with elections deniers, and that's why I'd like to be your next Secretary of State. Thanks so much. Anna? Thank you. Um, second question. Uh, Vermont has done much to remove unnecessary barriers in voting in recent years, but we are still far from full participation in our elections. Do you have specific ideas for reaching out to new voters, such as young people or new Americans, or finding ways to make it easier for those with disabilities to vote? Uh, First Deputy Secretary Winters. Sure, thank you for the question. Um, we are seen as, a, as leading the nation in access to voting. And I agree that the next step for us is to try to increase access, increase turnout. Um, we're, you know, we've done so much with respect to automatic voter registration, same day registration, vote by mail, ballot curing, early voting. For access and increasing turnout, uh, we need to look at vote by mail for primaries and local elections. Those are, those are complicated issues, but we really should look at it for the increase in participation that comes with it. Uh, for primaries, it's definitely achievable. Local elections, it's a little more complicated. Uh, we should continue our work um, with Americans and providing better language accessibility at the polls. Uh, we've done some experimentation with that in, in Burlington and Winooski. Chris, we it seems to have frozen here with about 30 seconds left. And so I think we should move uh, to the next and we will preserve the balance of Chris's time. As if, uh, oh, uh, Chris, you, Chris, Can you hear um, I'm sorry, you froze um, about 15 seconds ago. Uh, so I don't know if you, you can kind of finish up. I will try to, to um, wrap it up. Um, other things that we can do, we can make it easier for inmates to access and vote. We can um, bring back civics education to build that muscle at an early age. We can provide support for towns that want to do non-citizen voting and 16 and 17 year old voting. I need partners in this. And just as we did really effectively in 2020, we can use a, a coalition of groups interested 
participation and access that includes VPIRG, Main Street Alliance, uh, League of Women Voters, RAD, others. These groups will always have a seat at the table with me as important voices in Vermont's democracy. Great. Thank you so much. Um, Jeff, you Next, we have Representative Copeland Hansis. Hi, thank you. So um, I there's a couple of things that I'd like to do uh, in order to help increase uh, voter participation. Um, and uh, in addition to that education and outreach um, position that really gets out into our schools and communities to engage people in uh, participating in democracy, um, the Government Operations Committee this past session um, enacted a Vermont Youth Council, and that will be a council made up of young people from across the state. In statute, they're required to, um, to report to the legislature and the governor, but I would also invite them to report to me. Um, and, and in particular, I would love to engage with the Youth Council on um, and participating in a democracy and whether there are ideas coming from the youth that would inform how we direct that education and outreach coordinator. Um, automatic voter registration right now happens at the Department of Motor Vehicles, uh, but there are some people in Vermont who don't interact with uh, the DMV because they don't plan to drive. Um, uh, so older people who have moved to the state uh, or people maybe who are disabled and can't drive, their interaction with the state might be in the form of uh, signing up for Medicare benefits or Medicaid benefits. And in which case, we want to make sure that automatic voter registration gets those people registered as well. The last thing that I'd like to talk about really briefly is I think that Vermont should be producing an elections guide. When you get your ballot in the mail, you should also uh, have access to an online or paper version of a guide to all of the candidates and issues on your ballot. Great, thank you, Representative. Um, and Clerk Odom. Well, I'm a local election administrator, so I love this question. I could take hours. Um, and also talking about being local here, I think a lot of this work can be done at the local level. And I think the Secretary of State really needs to support that work. Um, we, I spearheaded non-citizen voting uh, here in Montpelier, which then lit the fuse for it happening in Winooski and you know, worked hard in the State House to make that happen. But Winooski and I were basically on our own, um, Winooski and Montpelier. Um, and both in trying to get it done, but also implementation. We ran into some real problems with that and we were on our own. I think the Secretary of State's office doesn't need to shy away from that and can support local communities in expanding the local franchise in this way or 16, 17 year old voters. Uh, I think they can help the local clerk's offices reach out to communities, bring absentee requests to them, such as uh, you know, seniors, the homeless, and I think at the statewide level, um, we need to expand the, the mail-in voting to include all elections. And I know that creates problems, but they're problems that need to be solved. And one way to help solve that and to increase turnout is to simplify our primary. I deal with more questions and have to reject more inappropriate ballots for the primary than, than any other election. And I think, again, Secretary of State's office can really take the lead on, on doing that because it's, it's, it's what we do. Thanks very much. Uh, we're gonna move to the third question now, which is, do you support ranked choice voting, which allows voters to rank candidates in order of preference for use in federal races here in Vermont, for instance, US House or US Senate, and for presidential primaries here? If so, would you take steps as Secretary of State to support putting ranked choice voting in place for the upcoming 2024 presidential primary? And we'll start with Representative Copeland Hansis. Um, that's a great question. Um, and, you know, we had uh, in the House Government Operations Committee this year, we had sort of been poised and ready to act on that provision uh, because we thought that it was originating in the Senate and was going to come over to us this year. Uh, I would have worked to move that through our committee and to the floor of the House, um, because I think that ranked choice voting um, is, uh, is a great opportunity for Vermonters to express uh, more than just their first preference, uh, also express their uh, second and third preferences in multi-way races. And 
the presidential primary is an ideal place for Vermonters to see how that works because there are always more than two candidates on your presidential primary ballot. Um, the fact that Burlington has um, re-enacted ranked choice voting, I think will give Vermonters an opportunity to see how that works. Um, and so I'm looking forward to, uh, to following how that's uh, playing out in Burlington and look forward to enacting um, ranked choice voting for the presidential primary uh, when I become Secretary of State. Uh, thanks very much. We'll move next to City Clerk Odom, please. This is such an interesting subject for me, as Paul knows. The activist in me prior to becoming clerk is always gung-ho for the obvious reasons. Ranked choice voting creates a, a more accurate picture of what the electorate wants. Ranked choice voting helps bring down some of the nastiness that you see in campaign because you don't want to annoy possible second choice voters. Um, and the election uh, administrator in me was always worried about implementing it. Well, I had that conversation with myself. I'm all for it. And when I'm all for something, I go all in. I think it should be applied as soon as possible and for all elections. I don't think it needs to be tested out. It's been tested out in Maine. Let's do it. But I want to see some public buy-in. I want to call this question statewide. And I think the Secretary of State, so as Secretary of State, I would take it on tour. I would have meetings, open meetings, all around the state. I bring in advocates, uh, regular voters, clerks, folks from Maine who have been doing this, and really call this question. Make that that understanding, that confidence, because we need confidence in it to make it work, and really bring that around and have that that level of overwhelming support, which I think we would find if we really make the truth known to folks and have that be impetus to make it happen at the legislative level. So yeah, I think the Secretary of State's office has to take the lead on it. Nobody else really can. Thanks very much. And Deputy Secretary. Thank you. Um, I'm in favor of ranked choice voting. I think we ought to bring it to Vermont, but we need to do it carefully and thoughtfully for it to succeed and to be fully embraced by Vermonters. Um, you know, Vermont's been a leader in so many ways nationally, as I've said, we're looked at as the gold standard. Vermont leads the way and we've been successful and we've been able to get things done with broad support from all parties because we are thorough and considerate and collaborative. And I know I'm preaching to the choir here a little bit, but ranked choice voting really does allow uh, voters to ensure majority support for winners, to, to um, allow for less negative campaigning, and allowing for voters to vote their conscience rather than voting strategically. Personally, I'm tired of voting against certain candidates when I'd rather be voting for my favorite candidate without, without fear that that would help someone else get elected. So we should definitely continue the conversation about ranked choice voting in 2023 and as the person who has led our legislative efforts with great success and great buy-in in the State House, I'm really proud of my track record, my ability to build consensus to solve complex problems the right way with broad support. And I would plan to lead that discussion in January if elected Secretary of State. Thank you. Um, next question. We believe that every state office has a responsibility to confront the climate crisis. Are there any specific steps that you would take as Secretary of State to call attention to the issue and to reduce climate pollution? First, Clerk Odom. Yeah, I th actually, I think there's a lot of things we could do, obviously within our little sphere, but still. Uh, I think, the again, as I was saying before, the Office of Professional Regulation is a great vehicle to bring these, these kind of issues up, to invite climate pledges uh, out to business people, uh, licensees, small business. And we should definitely do that. That is a unique medium to bring folks involved and get them involved in that. Uh, something I'd like to see is, I think it's time to work with the legislature and come up with some sort of professional regulation scheme for uh, Bitcoin mining. Uh, I know this is a relatively small issue now, but it's already become a big issue in New York. A lot of us were saying eventually this is going to become wide enough spread that it's actually going to have an impact on the climate, and that's happening. 
So that's concerning. And I think there's some symbolic things we could do. Uh, you know, we could work on, they're more than symbolic, um, on-site energy storage in all the Secretary of State's offices. I mean, that could make a, a really, really solid statement. So there are things we can do, um, sometimes direct and sometimes just as uh, serving as a role model. Thank you, Claire Godham. Um, Deputy Secretary Winters. Thank you. And I'm sorry, my internet connection is still a little unstable here. Um, but as a father of four, this is something that I worry about every day. I, I know my kids, especially my older two who are in their 20s, wonder what's in store for their future. There's, there's no doubt we have a climate emergency and we all need to be doing our, our part. Um, but when I'm sitting from the Secretary of State's office seat, when I look at any issue, I look at it through the lens of voting, protecting democracy, protecting the right to vote is part of protecting climate, protecting reproductive rights, fighting racism. The right to vote is the right from which all other rights flow. So that's the most important work I've been doing every single day for the last seven years is to preserve that right and reduce unnecessary barriers to voting. There are some specific things the Secretary of State's office can do and has been doing. Uh, we can reduce paper through the many online systems we've done. We can reduce commutes and office footprints through remote working. And we've learned from COVID and we're doing hybrid schedules now for most of our team. We can do a good job, and we already are, in welcoming climate refugees, registering clean energy businesses, helping spread the word about green energy building and weatherization through the, the professions and the trades that we regulate. Uh, I helped push through the regulation of foresters. Uh, we took over the licensing of wastewater operators and well drillers from ANR, uh, and a new home improvement contractor bill includes certifications and continuing education around green energy building. Um, honestly, the Secretary of State's office isn't exactly the best place if you're interested in making big changes on climate, but we can certainly do our part. Great, thank you. Um, Representative Copeland Hansis. Thank you. Um, I believe that Vermont needs more statewide leaders who wake up every day thinking about ways that we can meet our climate challenges. And I've been working on climate action for many years um, in my time in the House. And, uh, you know, for the beginning part of my 18 years in the legislature, it was a lot of uh, running up against a brick wall because, uh, because the climate deniers had such a firm handle on, uh, on the dialogue that it seemed anytime we went into the speaker's office or the pro tem's office with an idea of how to help Vermont uh, meet its climate goals, we would be met with, nope, don't say those words in my office. Um, so we, we took uh, a really systematic approach to resetting the conversation around climate. Um, and it's that kind of creativity and that kind of focus and dedicated attention that I will bring as your Secretary of State. Um, I think that we have a duty to, uh, as stewards of our public um, dollars, we have a duty to make sure that we are being as efficient as possible with all of our uh, buildings. Uh, and of course, the Secretary of State's office with uh, a number of different physical locations uh, can be pulling at the same time that the legislature, legislature is pushing to make our state buildings more efficient. Uh, we should have a, a listing of OPR registrants so that if you are looking for someone with a special certification, you can find that person. Um, and I think uh, fundamentally activating and empowering our youth and the youth vote is going to be critical because I saw it firsthand as a legislator when young people call on their leaders to act on climate, leaders listen. Thanks uh, very much for your responses to that question. Uh, the next question is kind of a two-parter. Um, and so it begins with this. Over a century ago, President Teddy Roosevelt said this of corporate money and politics, quote, all contributions by corporations to any political committee or for any political purpose should be forbidden by law, end quote. So the question to you is, the first part, uh, was President Roosevelt right? And should Vermont join the 22 other states that have banned corporate contributions to candidates? I think that can be relatively brief in terms of response. The second part of it is, what, if anything, would you do to help uh, try to uh, reinvigorate or improve Vermont's public financing system, which we have in place for a couple of statewide offices now, including governor and lieutenant governor? 
So that's the uh, that's the question. Uh, and the first goes to Deputy Deputy Secretary Winters, please. Uh, you are muted, Chris. Yes, got it, got it. My my internet connection I'm fighting with. Um, thank you. I think uh, President Roosevelt was right. I think money in politics is a problem. Uh, I uh, was a big fan growing up of, of John McCain and the McCain-Feingold and, and watching campaign finance reform um, from afar and, and thinking that's you know it's the root of all of the problems uh, in our ineffective government today is money in politics. Um, and now running as a candidate for the first time, it's really interesting running as a statewide candidate. I've run for a school board, but it's really interesting how much time I have to spend dialing for and chasing dollars when I feel like my time should be better spent meeting with voters. And I'm, I'm probably getting a, a, a skewed view uh, of what's important to people because I'm talking to donors more than I'm talking to, uh, maybe not more than, but in a disproportionate amount um, than I'm talking to regular voters. So I would love to see some kind of public financing expanded within uh, the state of Vermont. We've advocated for that before. It, it hasn't gotten anywhere. I think we have to have the courage to make the investment in uh, public financing and it will pay dividends. Uh, it's worth the investment. The return on investment is politicians who listen to the people rather than their donors. I don't think it's a huge problem in Vermont, but it's definitely something we should address. And I'd love to see public financing expanded in the state of Vermont. Thanks very much. Representative Copeland Hansis, please. Uh, thanks for the question. And uh, and yes, I do believe that uh, Roosevelt was right and that uh, corporate contributions should be banned um, in Vermont. And, uh, and we were certainly poised uh, to work on that before, before COVID hit and, um, and much of our agenda for the last two years was, uh, was overtaken by emergency elections provisions. Um, so public financing is also a really great idea, but there are other, um, there are other concerns that I have about uh, campaign finance transparency that I think are important to, to do going forward. Um, a couple of things that, that I could do on day one. Um, number one, uh, right now our campaign finance filings are, um, are not enforceable. Uh, meaning that if a candidate uh, is late or just neglects to register and file their uh, campaign finance uh, disclosures, there isn't really a penalty. I think the Secretary of State's office should, um, should first and foremost do what they do for all of the professions they regulate, and we should send a reminder to all of the candidates a couple days before the filing is due with the link to log on and file your disclosures. And then we should let the registered um, uh, candidates know that a week or so after the filing deadline or pick, pick a number of days, uh, we should uh, publish a list of who has not filed. Um, and simply, simple transparency will help a lot in, uh, in making sure that more people are complying with uh, campaign finance laws. Um, public financing is a great conversation to have. I think there's a lot of support for that in the legislature and I would advocate for us moving forward with that. Thanks very much. And um, uh, City Clerk Odom, please. Well, let me tell you firsthand, public financing would be great. It uh, would make my life a lot easier right now. But um, no, and, and you know, Chris is absolutely right that it's that it, along with I think the concerns about misinformation, is is the biggest threat to our democracy. Corporations aren't people; they have no inherent right to be getting involved in this way in in our election process. But where it's such a bad place with that now, there was momentum on this before when when Vermont did its work. So I think it, it seems like the farther we get corporate interests and powerful interests take us, you know, then even farther back than we were. So a critical thing the Secretary of State needs to do is to get out in front and talk about this, because the most frustrating thing about this issue is that it's not on, on many people's lists. People aren't getting it. So we need to get out in front and make it a priority to educate voters on that. And yeah, it's, um, it's something we've got to expand. 
And, you know, we're in a position, Vermont is, is, a, is a small state, and we stay in so many ways ahead of the pack when you talk about progressive politics. So where this has become an even more difficult issue in other states, we can still move forward with it and be a model for the rest of the country and get that ball rolling. This is probably on the top of the list for ways that we could lead. And that needs to come right out of the Secretary of State's office. Thanks very much. Uh, and now we're going to move to the third section of the debate where candidates have an opportunity to ask questions of one another. Uh, Deputy Secretary Winters, you are up first. So please ask a question of uh, one of your, one of the other ca candidates here. Uh, we'll have one minute to respond. Sure, thank you. And um, while we're speaking of corporations, I just wanna say Comcast stinks. My internet connection is awful. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> John, I have a question for you. Um, what would your top couple of priorities be regarding cybersecurity in the Secretary of State's office? Thanks for question right in my wheelhouse. <laughs> uh, I think I'd like to see, and I'll try to make this as quick as I can, uh, our biggest security holes right now are actually at the local clerk's offices, the computers they use to talk to the central voting role system and election management system at the Secretary of State's office. 95% of hacks, and I'm a certified ethical hacker, I know all about hacking, 95% come from malware or a software that hasn't been updated. So we need to get computers out to clerks that are only for elections, no Facebook, that are managed centrally, and we can take care of that. But the big thing is we need to get away from faceless, insecure corporations that are currently running many, if not most, of the election management and voter roll systems in this country and move towards an open source model. Uh, open source is collaborative, it's non-corporate. You see communities of computer experts constantly working to improve security. A lot of big companies have moved over to open source. Adam, and there's, uh, there's energy from Department of Homeland Security for it, so it's totally legit, we gotta do it. Thank you. Um, Representative Copeland Hansis, you can ask a question to one of the other candidates. Excellent. Um, I guess I will start with uh, Deputy Secretary Winters. Um, so one of the key roles of the Secretary of State's office is serving as that first stop for many uh, new and aspiring entrepreneurs in this state. Um, I was a small business owner and I know well the challenges of navigating that process and uh, and the struggle to you know, pay the bills and do your filings and uh, make sure that your employees are getting a livable wage um, and contributing to the vibrancy of your small downtown. Um, so I have uh, firsthand lived experience and I think it's an important um, uh, aspect of the qualifications for the job. Do you feel you have relevant experience running a business? I hung a small shingle when I got out of law school, a uh, small shingle, a shingle when I got out of law school for a law office in, uh, in Barrie. It was the first job that I ever had. And it was, uh, it was really tough. I was, it was tough trying to make ends meet. It was tough trying to understand the accounting, the uh, um, I am so sorry that um, Deputy Secretary Winter's connection is so poor on this one. Um, I think perhaps- You can't hear me, Paul. Oh, now I just, we just got you back. Uh, so if, if you, you, had, you had begun, uh, you're 10 or 15 seconds in, I think, if you wanna continue, uh, Chris. If, oh, that may not be possible. I am very sorry uh, about the technical challenges that we are having. Deputy Secretary, I don't know if you wanna go without video, if that would help, or here, we seem to have you back. Do you, All right, how's my connection now? For the moment, it seems okay. Uh, you wanna try give another try? Or you could try without video, I was suggesting. Yeah. I don't know. 
I can do that. Let's give it a let's give it a try that way. Thank you. Um, you know what I would say to that is I, I did run a small business for a short time, but I've been in the Secretary of State's office for 25 years, serving the public, working with businesses, working with licensed professionals, and. Uh, now, one of the things that I've been pushing for is a business portal, a one-stop shop for small businesses. I've met with hundreds of people by this time uh, to talk about small business, the regional development corporations, the chambers, to talk about what small business needs. And we've developed a really simple, uh, a really easy to use business portal. Okay, um, I think I think we're going to move on. We've gotten a a, a, a bit there, and appreciate uh, the response. Um, but I'm going to move uh, now, I believe, to City Clerk Odom. Do you have a question? And I'm going to suggest if you have a question for Representative Copeland Hansis, that might be good. <laughs> right. Um, so, just like the last time we did this, I am making it very clear I'm not running against anybody, just running for things I believe in. Um, never going to try to put you all on the spot, and I'm not going to do that now, but I'm going to ask Sarah if you, you know, we've all gotten, I think, some in, in, information recently that says this is going to be tight, and it's going to get tense. Will you join me in avoiding the gotcha questions and keeping it positive and in keeping so that we can make it all collaborative, no matter who wins. Absolutely, I don't think you even need to turn the timer on. I'm happy to uh, keep this all above board. Uh, I think the Office of Secretary of State is uh, is too important for us to uh, get mired down in any sort of gotcha politics. Thank you. Anna, are you? Um... I think we're going to try uh, with Secretary, Deputy Secretary Winters again here. So um, I'll just I'll just take this, Deputy Secretary Winters. Do you want to? Um, I, I, we did get I think most of your response the last time, and this is an opportunity for you to ask another question if you are able. Sure, I will. I will give it a try. Can everybody hear me? We can. Okay, great. Just to, just to very quickly finish my other question, and then maybe I'll just compound that right into a question for Representative Copeland Hansis. Um, you know, speaking to experts on business, I think I have a very good understanding of what businesses need, and we're building a business portal that'll make it even easier for any business to register and do business in the state of Vermont without having to worry about pushing paper around or cutting through the red tape. And so the question I would have for you is how does how do you believe that your 18 years of experience in the legislature translates to running an 80 person office with a 17 million dollar budget and four divisions covering a wide array of things not just business registration but professional regulation state archives and records management a legal division a law enforcement unit uh, overseeing a, a large budget. Um, how does that translate, you think? Great question, thank you. Um, I think that um, the, there are a lot of skills that you have to deploy when you are operating in a legislative realm, especially if you are operating in a leadership uh, capacity. Uh, as majority leader, I led a caucus of 95 or so um, people who were all duly elected and my ability to bring them along uh, revolved around my ability to have a positive working relationship, uh, maintain good communications, and, uh, and maintain uh, a, a constant uh, give and take in that relationship. So that set of management skills uh, is one that I think is, uh, is, is very well suited to, uh, to operating uh, the Secretary of State's office. Uh, in addition to that, um, I have spent a lot of years uh, juggling um, multiple different projects at the same time, uh, from uh, maintaining and operating my business to chairing, a, simultaneously chairing a legislative committee, to simultaneously working as head of the Climate Solutions Caucus as we develop strategies. And so I'm quite familiar with uh, how it feels to be managing a variety of uh, different projects simultaneously. 
thank you uh, so much. And uh, this then next question goes to you or for you to ask Representative Copeland Hansis. Oh, excellent. Um, okay, so um, John Odom, um, I was really proud to work along with you um, at, in your capacity as city clerk of Montpelier to enact um, uh, non-citizen voting for local elections in Montpelier. Um, and I was very impressed with your ability to articulate a clear set of uh, reasons and values as why Montpelier wanted to be able to invite um, its residents who don't happen to be United States citizens to participate. Uh, one of the challenges that we came up against, though, is uh, worrying that the list of people who are non-citizens um, being held separately and outside of uh, the, the voter checklist or included in the entire voter checklist could put those people in jeopardy uh, if, for instance, there was a backlash against non-citizen voting. And we, uh, we had some security concerns. You've mentioned uh, several times that you created a solution to that for your, uh, for your city and then shared that solution with Winooski. And in the event that there are other cities and towns in the future who want to enact uh, non-citizen voting, uh, can you share with us some thoughts on how you might uh, solve that um, conundrum for statewide or for other communities on an individual basis? Well, it was it was easier for us, I think, in that we you know passed a um, charter change that only targeted it was only uh, including legal residents. Well folks who were here under the, the terms of the law. So that takes a lot of that right out of there because a lot of that concern was about ICE, you know, taking lists and finding them to go after people. Uh, before I go further, yes, you were such a great ally to work with. I remember the first time I called you about this issue, I didn't know how you were gonna react and you were right there with it. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> well, and I, I think, um, I think a lot of support needs to come from the Secretary of State's office to promote and to assist and to raise up local communities that wanna take this route. Sometimes that's technical support. The bill we worked on created a parallel checklist that we kept all those folks in, uh, all the non-citizens. And that turned out to create this crazy technical problem that as you say, I wrote a little program to fix and you know, help Winooski do it. That's the kind of support we can provide that'll, that'll you know, really help from these problems from cropping up, unintentional problems, because it was a great bill. Great, thank you. Um, and Clerk Odom, this segment will end with you and one more question to one of your uh, fellow candidates. All right, Chris, it's your turn. Just as before, I'm gonna ask you the same question because I'm, I'm not running against anybody. I'm running for stuff. It's getting tight. I think we've all got some information suggesting that. So it's going to get tense. So here's the softball question for you to make yourself look good and knock it out of the park. Will you agree to, to keep away from the gotcha questions and to keep it positive? Because I've got to assume that we're, whoever wins, we're all going to be working together on these issues after the election. That's it. <laughs> oh, you're muted, Chris. It's been a challenging day, technology-wise, John. Could you come over and help me out, maybe? Um, uh, the answer is yes. Cost, yeah. <laughs> the answer is yes, absolutely. I consider each of you a, a valuable colleague and a friend. We've done a lot of great work together over the years. Um, I think you've got, we've each got really great ideas for the office. Not interested in playing gotcha, uh, interested in finding the most qualified person to be the Secretary of State and have the voters here all of our ideas. Um, and so this isn't about running against somebody, it's about running for who I am. Thanks for the question, John. Thanks to all of you for uh, the questions that you have for each other. Now, we promised to end this in one hour. And so we don't have time to do another full round of questions. And so what I'm uh, going to suggest that we do here is um, one uh, one minute closing statements from each of you. If uh, And if you went a little bit beyond that, uh, we have a little more time. So that is OK. But if there's anything else that you wanted us to raise today that we didn't have a chance to, you could uh, do that in addition to your uh, regular closing statement. Um, and so uh, let me go first to Deputy Secretary Winters for a closing statement. All right. 
thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate it. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties I've been experiencing here today. Hopefully this lasts for the next minute. Uh, in about a month, and, and not even in a month, um, in just a few weeks, Vermonters are going to be casting their ballots. And with so many candidates running, you might not hear much about this Secretary of State's race. Again, thank you, Vipurg. But I urge you to take a closer look at this race, as you've heard a little bit about it today, registering businesses, preserving archives, protecting the public, assisting municipalities, campaign finance and lobbyist disclosures, and overseeing Vermont's elections and protecting our most valuable right, the right to vote. The Secretary of State's office is diverse and it's complicated with 80 employees, a $17 million budget. We really need an experienced and hardworking manager in that office. A well-run Secretary of State's office makes Vermonters lives better, period. And I think you know, with the right person in charge, you're going to see public safety, you're going to see um, with the economy, you're going to see government transparency, you're going to see protection of democracy. And I'm running for Secretary of State to make sure that we have safe and secure elections, that our voters have access to voting in their government, our businesses have the support they need, our office is transparent, it's responsive, it's helpful at all times. And when I say these things, they aren't just talking points for me, they're deliverables. As Deputy Secretary of State for the last seven years, I've delivered on these promises time and time again. I'll bring my hard earned experience and my knowledge of the office to the top job. And I want to ensure stability and continuity at a time when conducting elections and running a state agency is more complicated than ever, at a time when it feels like everything we thought to be true is constantly changing. Thanks very much, Chris. Thank you. I'm, I, just, I believe that Vermonters want security, stability, and leadership they can trust, and I'll be ready to lead on day one. Thank you, Paul. Thanks, thanks very much. Um, City Clerk Odom, your closing, please. You know, first of all, I want to say I, I'm, I'm going to include myself in this because I'm learning to self-aggrandize in this process. But I think you've got three great candidates here. I think everybody brings something different to the table. I think everybody is competent. You've got three different levels of, of government, of, of being a public servant represented here. So I think it's about the three different visions that you see. Um, I mean, everybody's great. I'm voting for myself and here's why. Uh, I, I would create a secretary of state's office that brings that neighbor to neighbor perspective that only a municipal clerk has uh, to, the, to the, the higher levels. Um, I do take a more activist approach to the office. I do think there are things we can do to get the word out about very important issues and to bring particularly members of the business community together, but not just the business community. There are things we need to talk to the public about. So I would say, and I'll end before I, I even go on very long, that if that's the priority for you, I'd like to think I'm your guy, but you can't go wrong with this group. Thanks very much, Clerk Odom. And uh, finally, Representative Copeland Hansis, please. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for this great forum today. Um, it's been a lot of fun answering all of your questions and uh, hopefully all of the candidates will, uh, will get some follow-up inquiries from some of the folks who are watching this today. Um, in my 18 years in the legislature, I have, um, I have had the opportunity to work through a, a number of really complicated and complex uh, politically tense issues. Um, and I think that that's a skill set that is preparing me for, uh, for what's coming at secretaries of state in the, in the coming years. Um, I have worked through these issues, uh, oftentimes um, bringing people to consensus around something that was thought to be impossible. And I will point to um, pension reform as one of the recent uh, successes that I've had in taking a really difficult and really tense um, topic and bringing people together for uh, moving forward. Uh, as Secretary of State, I will prioritize reforms that strengthen our democracy. Uh, such as uh, youth engagement and outreach, and I will prioritize um, reforms that make doing business in Vermont easier. Um, I want to take the passion and skills that I've developed in the legislature to fight for our democracy in Vermont um, so that we can get back to that family dinner table, uh, learn to talk to each other again, 
um, I'm honored to be here and look forward to meeting you all on the campaign trail. Thank you, everyone. Uh, that concludes today's debate. If you'd like to learn more about VPIRG and vote in our mock ranked choice voting election, please visit www.vperg.org. Thank you so much and have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.